Hi there. So we are here in our computing center. And uh, last time you've heard about how computers can use numbers and calculate uh, with numbers in a special representation. But what you daily do is sending data. So you see here the blinking LEDs. So there's a lot of data flow on and a lot of traffic. And all of the data um, represent messages. So already now we just know that we can represent numbers. But how can we represent text messages? So that you can send, for example, WhatsApp or other messenger uh, messages to your friends. So therefore, before we continue with higher level things, we have to think about how can we represent text and how can we deal with data formats so that we send all of this stuff over the internet. So therefore, next lesson, the difference between binary numbers and ASCII or other text formats. So we'll see each other. So welcome to lesson number two um, about text and binary numbers. So what is the difference between text and binary? Um, there are different ways uh, to represent uh, text um, and therefore we'll see a little bit about character codes. So you'll see about Morse code, ASCII, ANSI, UTF-32, UTF-8, and so on. And then we'll train these things so that, that you learn a little bit about the difference uh, between text and binary when we read real data from an altimetry satellite, which is coded completely binary, so that we read a binary format. Maybe you remember. So usually we represent numbers in a computer like this. So you have eight bits which are combined to one byte and each position gives you the value. So you have a representation like this and then you convert it with a, a according position value to a number. So this is what you have in a numeral system. You can have fractional parts, you have operations. You use this for calculation um, and conversion between different number of systems. So, but what is the difference if you want to send a text message? If you want to send a text message, you have something completely different. You need again such a bit stream, but you need a method to convert it uh, between character signs and these special representations. So you have alphanumeric signs, characters or letters, which you have to convert using a conversion table, a code table, a coding table or a lookup table to get the binary representation. It's not so much used for mathematical calculations. You can use the mathematical calculations on these numbers um, for different aspects, but the original numbers are more or less oriented to represent characters. And then what you get is a sequence of bits representing these alphanumeric strings. So let's have a look into character codes. If you think about binary codes, you might have the idea that there is one very special binary code or seems to be a binary code 
which is quite old and which is um, used in, in different sceneries and therefore before we do that we have to think about code so if you search for example in the Langenscheid you find that it is an agreement on character systems for the communication data processing and data transfer so this communication aspect is this important part um, because the code which I mentioned which might come into your sense um, is used for communication on ships for example the code is a unique specification to transform a set of signs into another set of signs so it's nothing else than taking one representation and converting to another representation so if you look onto the screen here you have one representation like this a here you take it you take a lookup table or a conversion table you take the position where this character is located in the column of the characters and then you convert it to another representation like here to the binary representation and then you take this for your communication so the code which I mentioned and which might come into your mind is the Morse code because if you plot it like this you have a binary tree so for example if you want to represent the I then you follow the tree into this direction going to the right means a dot or a D short sound going to the left means a dash or a da long sound D da D da so representing the I means D D representing the M means da da so therefore um, it looks like a binary tree and it looks like a binary code but the problem is here that you have a code where each representation has not the same length so you have individual representations for example the A has just two signs or two new characters and the B has four so it's not length fixed and therefore if you do not have interrupts or short pauses it might happen that you uh, add a following part of a following character to a previous one and therefore you get a complete uh, different um, message therefore it's quite important that the binary code is not comparable to the Morse code even if you have this binary tree you have up to three additional pauses um, to, to represent this code so I want to show you how this works let's convert the famous sentence hello world known from any computer language to Morse code so H E L L O comma world so what we need for that is the lookup table for the Morse code and then we just take each character look up with this pattern in the table and replace the character with the according Morse code so H is here four dots E is here one dot L again an L and an O I did also the comma here so it's this and then we need a longer pause here at the end 
This longer pause gives us the signalization that a new word starts. We should not forget that here are also small pauses uh, between the different characters. And then we continue with world. O. R. L, we already know. And a D. So this is Hello World in Morse code. And if you send it or play it, it sounds like this. If you want to convert it back to normal text, we will receive this information. And then we can take the conversion uh, using this binary tree. And then we just follow the different directions. So a dot or a D is this direction, a da or a dash is this direction. So we receive these four dots. So this means D, 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 D. It's an H. We receive one dot. It's an E. We receive dot, dash, dot, dot. So this means dot, dash, dot, dot, it's an L, and again an L, and then we receive an O, which, which are three dashes, da, 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 O, and so on. If we follow this tree, we'll come back to Hello World. So you see, it's quite simple to convert different characters into another set of characters or signs. So in, in, in our case, we took our normal alphabet and used the lookup table in two directions. So one is the lookup table, which is here. So where you have the alphanumeric characters on the one side and the representation in Morse code on the other side, or we took this representation, which is just a representation of a lookup table where you just follow uh, into the different direction according to the representation or character representation of the Morse code. So, um, if you watch this in detail, you have this again. So you saw it in the sample. You have this representation and if you have this code with variable lengths, it is quite efficient because it saves memory and it saves time. But the difficulty is that you need a clear clock signal which tells you when the new character starts. So therefore white spaces or pauses are quite, quite important. If you send this, you have heard it in the uh, sample, if you send this over the network or over uh, uh, a call, then you will get on-offs, so you will have a sound and you will have a longer sound. So if you compare this here, you have longer sounds on and shorter sounds on and you have the gaps. And you send it, so if it arrives to you, then it comes from this direction and you will have to interpret here each single bit, so each single signal um, to get the information. But the problem is if you do something like this. So if you don't hear exactly the separation then you have the problem that you make a wrong connection or combination. For example, here you can, the H has four dots. And if you separate it, if, for example, a small pause is in between, then you would hear two eyes and so on. So from this message, it might happen that you get a completely destructed message. So therefore, variable length codes need identifier patterns, in our case for the Morse code pauses, 
and they need clock pulses. So um, a good Morse code sender has a specific clock uh, rate so that it's easy to interpret and to get a correct conversion. So therefore Morse code is not the ideal code for a computer. Because if you think about that, that you have to interpret these special periods, it's really, let's say, memory um, ideal, but uh, it's difficult to get the correct message. So for example, if you start again during a complete um, a message, then you have to find the starting point again. And that's quite difficult if you don't have these pauses. So therefore, computers used a fixed length code usually. And the most famous one is, um, sorry, this here, the ASCII uh, code. And the principle is exactly the same. You have a table with different columns. And one column is the re representation for one type of code. And the other is the representation for the other type of code. For example, in this case, you have a bit sequence for each character and you have the character here. And if you have this bit sequence, you can convert it also to a decimal, hexadecimal or octal number. But this number has nothing to do with the, the numeral system. So let's have a look, for example, to here. Here are the coded numbers, so the coded characters of the numbers, so the representation. So again, you should become clear that there's a difference between characters, so the representation of a number, and the value of a number. So what you have here is each number is a character. And in this code, for example, 0 is converted to 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So usually if you have the numeral system, you would have the 0 as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and so on. So what does it mean? This must be converted if you want to calculate. So if you enter something on your keyboard, you enter codes like this. And then if you want to use it for calculation, you have to convert it. But the principle for these tables is always the same. So you have one set of code and you want to convert it into another set of code. So you have one set of code and you want to convert it to another set of code using a lookup table. So therefore it's quite simple and it is also helpful because it's an ordered table. So for example, if you have this representation, which means it's a representation for A, A is on position 66, the table numbers start with zero. So you have a decimal number for A of 60, five and b uppercase is 66 and c is 67 and the same is if you watch on the table again and look for the lowercase letters so it's also easy to convert between lowercase and uppercase because if you have this ordered sequence you can use the distance between uppercase and lowercase and always subtract or add if you want to convert uppercase or lowercase. Let's come back to our famous sample. Our famous sample, um, Hello World. So, and I want to show you how this conversion happens. Similar to the Morse code, you can convert uh, characters to ASCII, which is used in the computers. So, we take again our very famous sentence, hello world, and we convert it by searching this character in our table in the right column and convert it to the corresponding bit stream. So in this case, we have one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. We fill it up to eight bits, and then this is the H. And then we have an E, the E is here, we have one, zero, 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 one, zero, one. 
1000101. We fill it up. We have the E and then the L. L is here 1000 1000101100. Fill it up and we have it again. So these are the L's. And then we have the O. The O is here, 100 and all ones. And this is hello. And then we just continue with this. Uh, we can convert it completely to ASCII code. If we want to convert it back, we take the bitstream. Because each is unique, we can take it as it is. And we just go into the column for the bitstream. So we search the pattern. In this case, it's this. And we convert it back to H. In this case, we search this bitstream. We find it here and we convert it back. And so on. And we'll come back to the sentence, hello world. So you see, it's quite simple. Again, just a conversion. So hello world here is represented in the other form with this decimal representation coming from the ASCII. So coming from the bit stream for each character where we always have eight bits. Uh, in the ASCII we have seven bits. Um, and the first one is always zero. And we use this to get the decimal numbers. So you have a bit stream which represents the O. And if you convert this bit stream according to the numeral system, so according to the positional system, then you will get this decimal number. And this decimal number um, is the representation for O, which also gives the position in the table. So, therefore, you can also identify the uppercase and lowercase. For example, it's an ordered list, as I said. So, 65 is A uppercase, 97 is A lowercase. So, therefore, it's easy to convert, for example, also lowercase set to uppercase set. Because you just use the distance between a pair of this, the distance mean the distance between the decimal numbers, so distance between 97 and 65. And if you subtract this distance from 122, you will get the lowercase. If you add this distance to 90, which is the character set, then you get the lowercase. So therefore you can do a simple conversion program from uppercase to lowercase and vice versa. Another thing is that also special characters like white spaces or uh, whatever um, is coded in form of such a, a, a number. So for example in this case a white space is decimal 32 in this coding table. and you also have special control signs. The ASCII code comes from the teletype writer uh, days and therefore there was the need to uh, bring the carriage back to the uh, original position, turn the wheel, ring the bell, all of this stuff. And these fragments of the old days are still available in the ASCII code. So if you have a standard ASCII code editor, you will have also line feed, carriage return, bell, which sounds a bell on your computer and things like that with ASCII. These control codes or these control letters are in special positions from 0 to 31 uh, in, in numbers. So the first 32 places are with this uh, control signs and also the last position in the ASCII code in the 7-bit ASCII code is a control sign. So it's position 
128 or in this model 127 because it starts from zero and goes to 127 what you can represent with seven bits so these control signs um, are one thing where you will find some problems if you do programming why I can show you the sample here because different operating systems use different control signs to represent for example a new line so in Windows you have carriage return line feed so a combination of these two uh, ASCII characters 13 and 10 and in Linux you just have the line feed so it's just the 10 so if you write ASCII text files in Windows and you want to read it in Linux you will always get one additional character which is this 13 the carriage return and vice versa so maybe you see sometimes the situation that a Linux text file opened in a Windows text editor will have just one line um, because there is no um, line feed uh, or, or no carriage return uh, in in this in this text so therefore it's a not so ideal situation because in different operating systems you have to deal with different sets or usages of of this uh, ASCII table if you remember the Morse code if you send it then you have sequences of up and uh, down so of high and low energy and the same can now be done with this ASCII code so you can start uh, and send the information and you just give a clock pulse and at each clock pulse you define if it is high level or low level so if you have a high voltage or low voltage so for the age which is uh, sorry which is 72 you will get this sequence here so zero 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 one zero zero one zero so we will have nothing 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 high level nothing nothing high level nothing and so on so you have a clock pulse for each eight bits or you have a clock pulse per bit which gives you the information so in this case this is called a sequential line or serial line so serial lines are still in use to get the easiest connection between two computers so what you just need is a set of two cables so these two cables define the voltages so RS232 or uh, other bus systems they use similar sets like that another possibility would be to do a parallel transfer so old printer lines for example use this to improve the speed so in this case eight bits or eight signals for each character are sent in sequence if you do it in parallel you have eight lines and these eight lines represent the different bits so bit zero in this case is no voltage bit one also no voltage and so on uh, bit three has voltage bit six has also voltage so you have a clock pulse again and then you get the information and you send it in parallel so with one clock pulse here you send eight bits so it's eight it's eight times faster than the serial line and therefore fixed length codes need a clear pulse per byte or in better case per bit to do the right timing for a correct conversion so it's a fixed length code we have seven or eight bits and we have it clearly structured so what is the difference now why did we fill it up with zero uh, at the beginning um, ASCII is a seven bit code and we fill it up with zero because we always have eight bits so we always have a sequence of eight bits why do we not use this eighth bit and this is the ANSI code ANSI code uses 
the additional bit and it uses it for special country codings. So, for example, in Germany you have these umlauts, ä, ö, ü, and so on. And in other uh, languages you have accent aigu, accent grave, and so on. So you need additional characters. And it's quite difficult if you don't have these characters, because with the English language the complete ASCII code is full. So what you can do is now you select a special coding and you adapt the coding um, with special characters and adapt it to the individual language. So therefore, for example, if you're Western Europe, you find this Latin one and you use the additional bit um, for this representation. So you have again 127 uh, numbers um, to represent additional characters. So what you now ha uh, have is that you have 256 characters, different characters, including the control signs. Therefore you have not all 256 uh, possibilities um, for your characters. You have reduced uh, 32 bits and the last one is um, for the control signs. So, but with these 256 characters, not all languages can be represented. Therefore, it's quite difficult, for example, if you have the Chinese language, where a lot of more characters must be represented. And therefore, other coding systems were established. And there are two differences. Again, like here, a fixed length or a variable length code. So a fixed length code is the UTF-32 and a variable length code is the UTF-8. They're different others, uh, but I want to show you just these two. Let's have a look into the 32-bit code. It's nothing else than the ASCII code with a fixed length, but just using 32 bits instead of 8. So you have a lot of more possibilities, but for example, what you see here in this table you also waste a lot of memory because you always have to fill the 32. It's a fixed length, so you cannot just transfer the information. You also have to transfer the non-information of zeros. And therefore, these uh, codes, these fixed length codes, are not so ideal if you want to represent huge data sets. So the Morse code was ideal, but it's not so ideal for the representation in a computer because it it, it requires these pauses but if you can replace the pauses uh, with um, special let's say trigger characters or trigger signs or trigger bits which represent the uh, different sections then uh, variable length code would be quite ideal so by the way UTF stands for Unicode transformation format universal code character set um, and the number here uh, represents the number of used bits. We directly change from the UTF-32 to the UTF-8 because this is the more interesting uh, code which also is the, the uh, brace between the different uh, codes. So we started with a variable length code and we will end with a variable length code. So in, in, in this case um, what is the difference? So, it's again a Unicode transformation format, UTF, and we use a variable length which is 8-bit specific. And the nice thing in this code is that the first byte or the first representation is exactly the ASCII code. So it starts with a zero and then it's exactly the ASCII code. So if you have UTF-8, then you can use the ASCII code as it is. And now the interesting th thing, uh, thing happened. So if you need characters which require more than 8 bits or more than 7 bits, then you add an additional byte and you represent it in this way that you have an information header. The information header represents with a 
set bytes, uh, set bits, that there is a number of bytes available. For example, in this case, if you have one one, it means that the word which must be connected together, um, which is one character, uh, is is built of two bytes. So one one means there are two bytes, and then you have the signal zero, like here. Zero always represents that a new information part starts and each trailing byte which belongs to this also starts with one zero. So you have this piggyback setup. You have a truck with a trailer. The truck can carry some information and the trailer can carry some information. You have a connection which is one zero. So each following trailer will have this one zero. And in the truck, you have the information um, how big your word is. So this X parts are replaced by the code. So you can now set each different character a different code. So even languages like uh, the Chinese language can have an individual uh, character representation, an individual image, which then can be represented uh, with this uh, data bit set and you can extend it um, up to a specific number of uh, following bytes. So in this case if you have three bytes at the sequence you set one 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 zero represents that the information starts and each following trailer has a one zero and the x, 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 x is filled with the information. So what you can do now is you can fill up six different trailers plus one bit here. So you have one, 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 zero, and then the, the, the information. And, um, and then you can represent all of this data. And with this, you can represent everything what you use in your daily life. So, for example, special signs like the uh, money, European money, uh, euro sign. Um, or you can represent something like emoticons. Or you can represent uh, braille so that um, handicapped people can also read text. And all of these characters. Uh, can be represented in such a style. And each character is an individual representation with a non-fixed, with a variable length of code. So what do you do if you now have a character which you want to represent? So you need an official table, so you need this standard, and then you look in this standard lookup table, like with the ASCII, you look into this code get the code number, then you convert this code number to the binary representation and then you check how many um, bytes you need to fill up the piggyback bits with your information and then you select this part here so that you know how many bytes you need and then you set all of this stuff and you replace the X's with the information and you have the finished uh, data set. So, and if we watch now, for example, uh, again, our famous sample, um, if we watch this, how many bytes or how many bits are required for this to store it on your computer, then you will see that, for example, UTF-8 has 104 bits, UTF-16 uses 208 bits and UTF-32 would use 416 bits. And the nice thing is as long as you just use ASCII characters, so characters which are also represented in the ASCII table, you would not need more space than what you would need for ASCII. So therefore, for most cases, there is no additional overhead. 
and this is a quite quite important thing so with this you have now the difference between text and numbers so numbers in case of a number system so if you enter a number on your keyboard you enter a character and this character must be converted to a bit representation and this bit representation must be converted to a number in numerics in a numerical sense so therefore you have a difference between representation and the real valued number so on that you see a little bit the difference so for example you can now have formats which are based on um, this ASCII or UTF standards so you can have a table where a human being can read the text because it's represented represented with characters um, and with signs which are known by humans um, or you can have binary formats where the numbers are uh, the numbers are written like they are in the computer like they are stored in a number system in the binary system therefore you have these both possibilities and both have advantages and disadvantages for example ASCII files or ASCII formats for data um, are quite handy for people because you can edit them you can read them and so on but binary formats are quite handy for computers because they reduce the number of size because they reduce uh, you just need for example for an integer with two bytes you just need two bytes if you write this in an ASCII each single number in the representation in the in the in the decimal representation must be represented with one byte and therefore um, there are pros and cons to do that you will see a little bit more about that in the tutorial uh, but before we do the tutorial um, I want to explain what we want to do in the tutorial or where the focus is um, you should have had a MATLAB course uh, hopefully so because for this tutorial we need MATLAB um, and if not please have a look into the primer which you also find on the download pages what we want to do is we want to read data from the altimetry satellite which is a completely binary based format and then we want to read it and we want to plot the positions of the satellite um, as as pass on the earth so what you get is something like that so if you open such a binary format with a text editor you will get something like this why if you have an integer number for example it's four bytes then the text editor will interpret each byte as a character so four bytes in this case are four characters the four bytes are written in numer numeral system so in binary system and if you read the four bytes in one block and interpret it as a numeric number then it's your number but if you open it with an editor it uses the ASCII table and checks each byte so each of these four bytes and searches the corresponding sign in the in the uh, ASCII table so therefore you get all of the signs which are found according to the byte string uh, the byte stream or the byte sequence so therefore if you have something like this it's quite difficult to read it because you have to know which number of bytes belong to one numeric system number and how it is represented is it an integer is it a float or whatever or is it just a character so and therefore if you get such binary data you need also a description which explains the format 
without this disc uh, without this description it's quite difficult to find out uh, what belongs to what so therefore you get a format and in our case the format is a text file which represents the different records so usually you will see later on if you do the data processing stuff you will see that um, information is always represented in form of records so for example per minute you have one set of data which is always available for each minute or something like that so in this case one record um, consists of 20 elements and a record is represented like this the first information here 0, zero 001 is the Julian day in on the epoch of 2000 so what you get in this is the information of the first value in the record and then the next value in the record 002 is the geodetic latitude and the next is the geodetic longitude and so on you also get an information about the complete data set at all so you have a header here and this header gives you information about the information here and also about the satellite so for example it tells you that each record consists of 20 elements as explained and one record in total has 52 bytes so after 52 bytes you can get the next record so this helps to find a special position in the file so if you have continuous stream of uh, data and you want to read uh, record number thousand you have a fixed length record then you just have to jump to the position uh, 1000 uh, times 52 and then we also get the information about the satellite so in this case it's the Envisat satellite and we want to read this so as explained the first value in the record is the Julian day but now we have to know how the data is represented in this record so in this case the first column is the value position the next column tells you the number of bytes used in this case it's a, a 4 which means a signed integer with 4 bytes so there is a plus and a minus available and then you have also um, a division factor because the format here converts all numbers to integer numbers so not float numbers are stored it's always shifted so that you will get an integer number and this shifting factor is then this value which can be found here minus 5 minus 5 means you have to multiply the value uh, with 10 to the power of minus 5 so that you get a shifting to the right position to get the floating point number again so again the format stores everything in integer so if you have a floating point number you have to shift the relevant information the relevant positions to a position in front of the floating dot and therefore this shifting factor must be stored somewhere and this is the shifting factor here so the information about the number of bytes and the shifting factor together gives you the information how you can do the recalculation to get the original data again let's have a look uh, to the next one for example in this case we have again four here plus uh, but with a plus now so this means we have again four bytes and these four bytes are just in the positive range so there's a plus it's an uh, unsigned integer um, and this unsigned integer must again be calculated um, with 10 to the power of minus 6 
So, and it gives the degree. And then, for example, you can also have some flags. The flags here um, gives you information about the instrument. So it's just one byte and with one byte you have 256 states which you can code. And uh, with this you can give some status information like was there a snow surface or uh, was it a, a green land or was it what, whatever. So therefore you have these three possibilities. You have signed integers to read which you convert them to float. You have unsigned integer with which you convert to float or you have status flags one byte which you convert to a status information. Each byte, uh, each bit in this byte or a sequence of, 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 of bits so that you have a number which represents a special state uh, can be used to, um, to represent the states or the different numbers. So in MATLAB you need now uh, a method to interpret the different binary sequences of bytes in the correct way. So what you do is you use the normal open and close mechanism and the read mechanism shown here. So you open the file, the file with the name like here, you open it for reading and you get a file descriptor of file ID. And with this file descriptor of file ID you can read now. In this case we read exactly one time in 32 and in 32 is a 4 byte integer and in 32 is with sign. So you have unsigned and you have signed. So with this you can separate between signed and unsigned and the number of bytes you want to read. So for example int 8, int 16, int 32 or single uh, elements uh, of one byte for the flags for example with u character, unsigned character. And if you want to read one record you need at least 20 of this um, single calls where each call is individual to the data sequence you want to read. So individual to the number. So if you want to read one uh, integer number with four bytes which is the for example Julian Epoch you take this and you read one times in 32 and then you multiply it with 10 to the power of minus 5. If you read the longitude or whatever then you have to find out how the longitude is stored in the information uh, about the, 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 the uh, slide uh, about the um, data and then you can read it in the way which is required for that. So here's the example. Um, we do the opening, we do the reading, we do the division or multiplication, so the multiplication 10 to the power of minus 5 or the division uh, here and then we store the value in the record. And then this is the first value in the record and then we do it for all of the other values in the record and then we have to do it for each record. So what you will get then if you do it for one record is a table, a matrix, where for example each line contains the information of one record and you have a sequence of lines per file uh, which you have then in the record. So you have 20 parameters and you have the sequence of records in the lines. And therefore you have to do it uh, for all of the records and you can do this with a while loop so as long as the file is not finished so as long end of file is not reached you continue reading and you always read 20 elements 
um, to avoid uh, crashes if one record is not complete you can also check during the reading or after each reading um, if end of file is already reached or you do it in this way that you read and check what you read so if you really got the number of uh, bytes which you really uh, requested so therefore you do it for all of the records in one file and then you can also do it for all files so you do a loop for or you do a sequence of read calls individual read calls um, in your record reading then you do a loop for all records and then you do a loop for all files and what you get at the end is this so you will get data in a matrix which you can use then to plot simple xy plot so longitude uh, over latitude or vice versa and then you will get such a plot I can show you this with uh, a small MATLAB program and this is what you should should do for your own in the uh, tutorial so here's the MATLAB program you see the reading so we open files um, this is the opening for all files and then this is the reading of records and here we read each single value in the record um, and then we do the plotting so what you get if you let it run um, is the following so we read different files and then we plot the data here in this case I plot the data always individually with different colors so that you see the different paths um, or satellite passages um, in different colors. If you are really sophisticated, you can also uh, plot it on a map, for example, like this, so that you see the, the position of the satellite on a map. So, with this information, um, we can read the data, the binary data, and then we can use our knowledge that there is a difference between binary and ASCII, and we can create files um, with ASCII information of the same data, so that the complete table is stored, the complete matrix is stored as an ASCII file, a human readable file. And you can do this in, with these functions here. So you open the file for writing and then you can use the fprintf function to print all of the data um, with a special format. And here you have all of the formats available. So you have to do it for all single uh, values. If you want to have it with different um, fractional part in the floating point you have to do it individually per value uh, if you want to store it just as a matrix uh, without uh, different um, precision then you can directly do it with safe for example um, with a safe function but if you want to do it individually here you have this fprintf uh, formats which you can use here in the in this output format style and then you will see that you can also read the ASCII format again and that it is a little bit different to what we did before. So in, in this case now we have to open the file again and then we have to read line by line. Each line contains 20 elements. We have to read the line by line and then we have to split the data again um, so that we get the different columns and then we have to convert the data to our records so the reading is again a loop 
but the reading method is completely different between ASCII and binary. So in ASCII it's easy, you just have to look into your file, you check if you understand the principle of the file, you have a special format, the format for example is given by the columns and the uh, lines or the rows, so you, you directly know this format and then you can use this reading. In binary you have to exactly know how long uh, the different sequences for each different number, numeric number, uh, is defined so that you can read it again. And as we have heard about UTF, here is also a mechanism to read UTF-8 uh, style. So you're welcome to play a little bit with this stuff and uh, to to learn a little bit about um, these techniques. So what you should take with you is that there is a big difference between the numerical representation of numbers and the character representation of numbers or of number characters or of letters which represent the numbers um, and that there are differences between the binary file formats and the ASCII file formats and if you play with this stuff you can get an idea of what needs more memory so compare the binary file which you download from uh, the Moodle, compare it to the file which you created in ASCII and then you will see that for huge data sets with really structured records that binary is much more efficient than um, the ASCII files in memory. So um, you can also think about what is faster to read, the, the binary or the ASCII files. So play a little bit with this stuff and write the code and stay safe. We will see each other again for the next lesson. And Bye-bye.